I'm gonna use this to sneak into the 7 6 annex. <sighs> All right, let's get to it. Sorry, but you're staying outside. Only I know what to steal from where, so it's gotta be me who goes in. So, we came all this way just to eat pizza? I don't see any intruders. Maybe they went home. Oh, hey, over there! Target sight! Find him out! I was very critical of Square Enix for what I perceive to have been a misstep that they made at the ending of the first Bond mission. That I'm referring to the fact that the avalanche bomb really only wrecked the reactor, and the Shinra's actions were responsible for the entire thing exploding. Now, what I figured was it was very important that the Avalanche characters be responsible for everything that happened, all of the collateral damage that occurred. They were there thinking they were doing something right, they were hurting Shinra, they were destroying the reactor, but they caused a lot of damage to other people's lives. No doubt a lot of innocent people died, a lot of bad things happened, hospitals lost power, people were stuck in elevators, that kind of shit. So when Shinra is actually responsible, intentionally destroying the reactor. Kind of messes that entire thing up. Shinra is of course, even in the original game, this kind of Machiavellian style villain. Ones that don't really care about the damage they cause otherwise. They do in fact, spoiler alert, but they do in fact drop the Sector 7 plate on the slums with the purpose of destroying Avalanche, even though it would destroy the lives of a lot of people. But I did feel the need that the Avalanche characters have some responsibility for the bad things that happen. Uh, oh, you gotta be shitting me. Give me a bit more time and I got you. Give it up! Now, I don't have any future knowledge of this game. I have played a little bit further into it than this mission, but I haven't seen even the mid part of this game yet. So I don't have any sort of future knowledge of where they are going with these characters. But it is my suspicion that the reason why they shifted the blame from Avalanche to Shinra was because they didn't want any modern players with modern sensibilities to have this kind of distorted perspective of the main characters. Back in the 90s when this game came out, it seems as though people would be more willing to identify with and accept characters with deep enough flaws that they go and they do something, such as blowing up a power plant that has an enormous amount of collateral damage. Whereas modern players, let's say, are a little bit more sensitive than they used to be. People who may not even have been born in the year that Final Fantasy VII had released would be playing this game, they kind of actually have to sell to those people in order to make a game this big become a success, this expensive become a success. So they have to sell to a different market. So is a contemporary audience one that would accept somebody like Cloud having no issues with killing so many people? Somebody like Tifa not really even seeming to care about all that death and destruction, or Jesse or Barrett who don't seem to care about all the people that they've killed. I don't know if that's the case, 
And I don't know if it's a good thing that they change the characters, but they do seem to be going through some effort with this game to make some reason for it. From what I've seen so far, including the mission that we're on now in order to sneak into a munitions plant in order to, or a warehouse or whatever this is, in order to steal some explosives to make the next bomb less powerful so the next bomb doesn't result in a destruction that really wasn't Jesse's fault, but she thinks it was. By having this happen, I guess they're kind of making up for that deficiency I perceived earlier. It's not Jesse's fault that that reactor exploded the way it did. But from where she's sitting, she thinks it is. So she's being affected by it as a character and she's taking steps to avoid it happening again. This kind of makes up for that problem, but I'm not sure I think it's really the best. I still would have preferred Avalanche responsible for the explosion. Any last words? I think I ran off the pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Hell of a show, man. If only the ladies loved you that much. I'm glad someone's enjoying themselves. <sighs> of course, they stole Max here. More than you know. Look what I found. Let's give these jerks a taste of their own medicine. While Jesse and Tifa, and even Barrett to some extent, seem to have reservations about what they are doing, Biggs and Wedge, on the other hand, seem to not, they're not very deep characters at all. And they don't seem to have any sort of internal conflict over what is going on here. They're not particularly torn up about all the destruction that they caused. They seem to be running around uh, Wedge here, especially it's kind of a comedic character. Even more so than he was in the original game. To me, this is creating a bit of a weird dissonance between the different members of Avalanche. Now, I don't expect everybody to have some kind of a homogenous opinion about what's going on here. Some characters are going to have different perspectives on things than others. Oh yes, he guessed one. That was part of my problem. They're all going to have different opinions on what's going on or what needs to be done or how to deal with it. But to have a character like Jesse who is, well, willing to go on this dangerous mission here in order to try to prevent what happened before, and Tifa who is so adamant in her belief that what they're doing is going too far that she's actually, in a sense, arguing against Avalanche's interests, saying that they shouldn't go on the next bombing run or anything like that. It shows that you have some characters who are caught up in the morality of the situation. Then you turn around and you have Biggs and Wedge. Now, Wedge is practically just a purely comedic character. He doesn't seem to have any real... Uh, place in the story other than the goof. Somebody who I guess serves his function in Avalanche and on his missions and all that kind of thing. But he's just a little doofus. He's running around, he's getting chased by the dog, he's getting bit in the ass, he's talking about food all the time. He's a comedic role. And then you have uh, Biggs, who so far hasn't really shown any kind of character development at all. He's not going to end up becoming anything significant and I guess that's all right 
not every character has to be dynamic and not every character has to be round. In fact, it's probably a good thing that you have more complex characters like Jesse sitting in the periphery of the story, as well as simpler characters like Biggs and Wedge. They can serve their function without being overly developed. If they were developed, it might just end up being some kind of distraction in the story. Biggs and Wedge to being developed? Well, no one really cares, huh? Now that's what I call teamwork! <laughs> Stay where you are! <laughs> well, shit. All right, assholes! Show me your hand! <laughs> You know what I want. A second dance. Just the two of us. You turned the key. The engine roars with excitement. It hungers to be set free! Fall back. Uh, 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 Alright. Uh, Come on. Uh, uh. It's been a long time since I fought a duel out of the saddle. But, for all the miles on the clock... I'm just as fast as I ever was! At last, I'm gone. Come on. It's been a few days since I recorded the commentary of the previous episode, so forgive me if I'm repeating a few things that I may have said before. But this character, Roke, here, is kind of... I have two opinions about him. On one hand, he's a new creation for the sake of this remake, so in that regard, he's always going to feel kind of superfluous. He didn't exist in the original story, this kind of character wasn't needed at this part of the game, so why the hell did they feel the need to put one in here now? But on the other hand, I understand why he exists. He is a secondary antagonist and a reoccurring enemy who's probably going to prop up a few times during the game. Now in the original game, I think it was probably you'd say the Turks were the characters that fulfilled this role. But in this game, taking place during the time span or the portions of the story the original game took place, the Turks didn't hold much of a role. Turks don't really appear until after the second bombing mission. <laughs> I told you we were gonna push it past the red line! Now, since the Turks don't exist in this game, or won't exist until too far into the game to effectively portray as a kind of secondary antagonist, they needed somebody else. So, enter Roke. Now, he's if you read, read the description, turns out he's a third-class soldier, which I guess would have made him kind of one of the lesser members of Soldier. But even... Uh, I guess a Soldier is supposed to be such a super elite organization that a character that's supposed to be as powerful as he is really only merits being a third class. His presence here does address a certain deficiency I felt the original game had, though, which was with Soldier itself. Now, it was supposed to be this super elite private military corporation, which was a wing or a department of Shinra, that you hear all these things about soldier they're the best soldiers in the world they like sephiroth was one cloud was supposedly one uh, i don't know you look at like uh in the spin-off games like angeal and genesis were soldiers and they were supposed to be 
this incredible threat, but you never really saw that. In fact, you did run into a run into some soldiers as random enemies in the Shinra building, third class soldiers, but they weren't significant. And as that fact, there's a good chance that you would get through that portion of the game and not get into one of the random encounters with them. And the second class soldiers, I think, might have been in the second disc and in the third class soldier or the first class soldier as you encounter when you're re-entering Midgar. So they're random encounters. And they don't really come across as that big of a threat. So like what was the what was all the hype about with Soldier? So here we go. Now we have a soldier who is a secondary antagonist in this game, demonstrating why it was that they were so feared and why they were so important to the organization of Shinra. Of course, I think this character's personality is a little over the top. They could have settled down a little bit with this guy. <laughs> but, you know, we'll see how it works out. <laughs> Fuck him up! There we go. Any time now. Satisfied? <laughs> With such fleeting pleasure? Hardly. <sighs> there are higher heights to which you and I can still soar. Okay, boys! Give them everything you've got! But kill the swordsman first! this again until then try not to die I'll see you on the road my friend <laughs> will be fine, but you won't be if they start asking questions. And who are they? First guests to the party, another avalanche cell. Our holier-than-thou friends from the old guard. <laughs> it's always their way or the highway. Lately, they've been a real pain in the ass. Till now. So then why are they here? Beats me. We've been on the outs ever since our cell got labeled too extreme. Though they're the ones running around with mil-spec gear. Word is, they cut a deal with Wu-Tai. Promised them all the materia in Midgar, apparently. Think there's any truth to that? You tell me. 
Sometimes, I think we're the only ones who've realized the war's over. Okay, mission complete. Let's make our way back to the lot. Right. Looking a lot more crowded now. Security's out in force. Just what we need. So, are we not gonna wait for Wedge? If we stuck around or went back, we'd only get upset. Why is that? There's a soldier who wouldn't understand. Don't tell him you're worried about him, though. And he lets them go. What kind of loyalty to Shinra does he actually have? Was that all just for his own sake? You made it! Over here! <laughs> okay! Form up! Let's go! <laughs> Could you have been any louder? I mean, it made my job a lot easier, but... Wait, where's Wedge? <gasps> Wedge! <laughs> that was close. We'll go get him. <laughs> hey, buddy. How you doing? Come on. Not my finest hour. You get hit? Just swinged, I think. Oh, shot! Really? Let me see. Are we seriously doing this here? That's... Wow. You guys are the worst! Huh? Your ass is fine. Maybe singed, but the only casualty is your underwear. This is like a bruise or a mild burn at worst. <gasps> now that was a gunshot. <laughs> is that a smile I spy? Mm -hmm. It's not safe here. We should go. <laughs> Copy, Copy that. that. So, how do we get back to the slums? <laughs> With a little trick I've been dying to try out. That doesn't look like that tight of a fit, but whatever okay so we do see that avalanche is a much greater organization than the group of losers that we've seen so far in fact they seem to have the look at how much space there is damn it they're able to organize such a large scale attack to what we've seen here and they are aware of our characters here and well in a sense they did rescue wedge there but they kind of unceremoniously dumped him on the ground outside of the factory so he can be rescued no doubt they <laughs> I don't know they didn't seem to really care about him but they considered him a friendly so they didn't leave him to die they kind of half-assed rescued him right this is it through here and we're home free where exactly are we going when we get there no, no. Now that I've got my blasting agent, we should have everything we need for our next mission. Sure hope. Yeah, me too. For your dad's sake. Hey, what the hell, man? Huh? Uh, Cloud was just saying how he hopes to come back and try the Midgar special next time. Really, huh? Cloud said that? Sure did. Wants a whole pie to himself. Isn't that right? That's... that's right. Really? Well, okay then. Maybe I'll lend Mom a hand next time, too. That'd be awesome! Super duper awesome! Biggs feels need to judge the other members of Avalanche for being, like, calling them too extreme while they got assault weapons and all that. They attacked a, f a factory here, or a warehouse. You blew up a damn power plant. Who's the more extreme there, Biggs? Who's the more extreme? Should be somewhere around here. Bingo. Mm -hmm. I have figured my dad got it wrong, but nope. They're here just like he said. Parachutes? 
Mm -hmm. Huh? What do you mean, half-figured? 50-50 is pretty good odds, if you ask me. <laughs> this is w gonna be wait, fun. Uh, 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 <sighs> Thanks, guys. I really appreciate you coming all this way with me. And like I said before, I'd be grateful if you kept this between us until after the mission. I don't want to complicate things. Sure. Okay, who's ready to fly? Me, me! Hey, Cloud, you let him down gently, all right? Yep. Wait, I almost forgot. One more thing. Whoa! S oh. Stop it! Oh. What in the hell are you trying to... Uh. Uh, easy, you'll make us fall! Not if you do first! <laughs> Swing by my place after, so I can pay you in full. No! <laughs> Wait! Give me a minute! No. Why you have to be such a hard-ass, bro? I ain't your bro. <laughs> done more just got hurt you did enough you took one for the team be proud yeah yeah <laughs> feels like we're flying high these days <laughs> now more than ever he's a keeper all right yeah together we can take on the world the cherry on top oh. okay I get it mind letting me breathe depends mind coming over tomorrow night my roommates should all be out for a while are you seriously that desperate just let go already